647, just about to hit 648 on this Tuesday morning, taking a live look at Boston, Massachusetts. A jury will start deliberating the fate of Boston Marathon bombing suspect Jokar Sarnayev today. Closing arguments wrapped up last night. The big question, whether the only surviving suspect will face the death penalty. Defense attorneys during the trial admitted he took part in the bombing, but tried to place the blame for the planning on his brother Tamerlan, who was killed in a shootout with police. Hi, again, good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. Now, 12 minutes before 7, I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch, and we're starting our nonstop news and weather all the way to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we start with a story that's new for you this morning. Two teenagers were hurt in a rollover crash in Ransom County last night. It happened just about 8 o'clock, about four miles west of Enderlin, North Dakota. The highway patrol says an SUV was headed west on a gravel township road when the driver lost control went into the ditch. That SUV then rolled over and eventually caught on fire. The passenger, 14-year-old Alexa Gossett, wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from the vehicle during the rollover. The driver, 17-year-old Sabrina Hugh-Miller, was able to free herself and escape that vehicle before it caught on fire. Both teens were taken to the Lisbon Hospital. Their conditions are unknown at this time. The crash remains under investigation by the Highway Patrol. Also new this morning, one person was killed last night in a crash involving four vehicles in the Twin Cities. Yeah, it happened around 7.30 on Highway 55 in Medina. That's just west of Plymouth. One person was killed in that crash, as we said. Three other people taken to the hospital. This is a picture of the aftermath. The condition of those hurt is unknown this morning. That uh, area of highway was closed down for several hours so investigators could reconstruct the scene and try and figure out exactly what caused that crash. A bill is now on the way to the governor's desk that would require a special election if one of North Dakota's U.S. Senators decides to leave office. The state Senate passed the bill yesterday afternoon. Democrats brought two amendments to the table. One would have allowed the governor to appoint an interim senator. The other, a requirement for a special election for any vacancy in a statewide office. Both failed. Some say the bill was brought forward after rumors that Senator Heidi Heitkamp may run for governor in 2016. Coming up on 651 on this Tuesday morning, weather and traffic on the ones getting started with meteorologist Mick Kerr. Thank you, and we start with a cloudy sky. Very dark gray clouds out there. And in another hour or so, will the snow start? No, I don't think so. It's going to be mid-morning before we see any precipitation move into eastern North Dakota. And it's going to be mostly liquid because the temperature is already 37 degrees and we're on the way to about 40 to 42, even though the computer model doesn't quite agree with me. West of the I-29 corridor, there will be some snow. Valley City up Highway 1 through Cooperstown into the uh, Devil's Lake area through Nelson County. There will be some snow probably accumulating, but then it'll all get washed away later this afternoon in the form of some light rain showers, and then this evening we'll track into northeastern Minnesota. For the afternoon, call it mostly cloudy, sprinkles and cool, and a east-southeast wind about 14 on the way to about 39 to 42. West-central Minnesota, same story, cloudy, rain, sprinkles, not a whole lot of precipitation amounts. But the earth is going to soak it up like a sponge. In northwestern Minnesota and northeast North Dakota, there will be more like flurries or light snow, enough to maybe cover the ground on the grassy surfaces. 32 to 37 degrees with sprinkles or flurries, or the other way around, maybe some flurries followed by some sprinkles that will wash it all away. Starting in the Devil's Lake area now and west of Jamestown, western Stutzman County, out into the uh, Kidder County area around Medina, North Dakota, there is some snow that stretches way out west. We've got some rain along the Missouri River in south central South Dakota. That's all tracking in our direction. So we have the potential to see some wet weather, just not a whole lot of wet weather. 32 feels like 24 in Grand Forks, East Grand Forks, Fargo-Moorhead with uh, east-northeast wind at 9. It feels like 30, so a little cool. Air temp, 37. Let's get a traffic update now from Valley News Live's Al Ahmed. I'm out on the Metro Interstate Loop this morning, Mick, and uh, traffic's getting pretty darn thick. Uh, by the way, that uh, Highway Patrol officer that had a car pulled over at 45th, and Westbound Interstate 94, they've cleared that scene. It's a good thing, too, because traffic is, as I said, getting really thick on Interstate 94. Same thing on Interstate 29. I'm northbound on 29th from 52nd Avenue. Very heavy traffic out here, just a steady stream of lights. Travel speeds, uh, 60, 65.
sometimes a little bit faster than that through right through town. Got to really be careful about that. Little congestion building, too, around the ramps and at the tri-level. Drive carefully this morning. Al Ahmed Valley today traffic. It's now seven minutes before seven. North Dakota Democrats are asking the governor to take action against discrimination. Every Democratic member of the state House and Senate signed a letter to the governor calling for an executive order that prohibits discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Governor Dalrymple did sign an order last year that requires all cabinet agencies to treat their employees fairly and also issued a memo yesterday morning reminding cabinet members that his administration does not tolerate any discrimination, including on the basis of sexual orientation. A Crookston, Minnesota family is considering themselves pretty lucky after almost getting ripped off while they were looking for a puppy online. We've heard about scam artists using websites like Craigslist, but this time it was on PetFinder.com. We spoke to the family who said red flags went up when they were sent two different pictures of what was going to be their new four-legged family member. They made plans to pick up the pup in Jamestown, but the address given was a fake. They were also concerned when the sellers asked for personal information. Why someone would want my full home address when I'd already made arrangements to pick it up. And we did reach out to PetFinder.com to see if they knew of any scam activity happening on their website. So far, we haven't heard back, but the ad is still posted. If you're sending lots of LOLs and smiley faces while you're driving, get ready to pay the price. A hundred bucks to be exact. Fargo police are among several area law enforcement agencies cracking down on distracted driving this month, and citations are already racking up. Several were handed out yesterday when we were on our ride along. Now, officers say this type of education through enforcement really does get the message across. Clay County Law Enforcement will also start increased distracted driving patrols starting next week. Distracted driving accounts for thousands of crashes in North Dakota and Minnesota every year. Today may be the perfect day <laughs> to grab some suds with your buds. That's because it's National Beer Day, an unofficial holiday recognized by beer enthusiasts everywhere, including a couple at this desk this morning. It was 82 years ago today that the Cullen Harrison Act took effect, ending prohibition. It was signed by President Franklin D. Roosevelt and allowed Americans to buy beer and liquor legally again for the first time in 13 years. Beer, of course, is now a multi-billion dollar a year industry. A new survey from Wakefield Research and Let's Grab a Beer asked beer drinkers with whom they'd most like to have a beer with. More Americans chose NBC's own Jimmy Fallon than any other celebrity. I'd like to have a beer with Jimmy. I can see why that pick would be. Uh, he's... It's so much fun to be around. Just watch it on the show. You can only imagine what it would be like being in the room with them. Well, it is the time of year when maple syrup makers are collecting the sap that will soon be served up on delicious pancakes and waffles or really pretty much anything you want to pour maple syrup on. The Valley Today's Christy Larson joins us live from Jake's Syrups and Natural Products near Vergas with more on this sweet treat. Good morning, Christy. Yes, that's right, Kyle and Lisa. You know, we showed you guys how that process was done, and they do have about 1,500 trees that they tapped this year. And D-May, I know that you guys have a few products out here, but let's again show people just how much sap it takes to put it into one small bottle. Yeah, when we have tours and we say the 40 to 1 ratio, it's kind of hard to get your head around that. So we have a five-gallon bucket right there, and that's what we gather the sap in. And that other little tiny container, there is a pint, and that's about how much syrup you would get from that much sap. And if people want to taste your syrup, there is that Maple Fest happening in Vergas this weekend, and you guys are actually providing the syrup that's going to be on the pancakes. Yes, the Vergas Maple Syrup Fest is, uh, they serve breakfast 8 till 12, and it's $8 for adults, and kids under 12 are $4. And there are a lot of other activities going on. If you go to the cityofvergas.com, you can find out, and there will be um, sugar bush tours. Um, we don't know exactly who is giving a tour yet, but we will be. And there will be maps available at the breakfast. Yeah. And I am going to take a little taste test of the syrup as well. And again, you can find their products at the street fairs. You can also find them at local shops around the area. And Kyle and Lisa, here's just a little sample of the maple syrup. And okay. It's delicious. It's sugary sweet. I love it. I like, I'm in heaven. I like how you're pretending that's the first sample that you've had this morning. We know better, Christy Larson. We know better. One small little spoonful. <laughs> Sorry. 45 of those small little spoonfuls. Yeah. She's probably just drinking it out of the bottle when we're not watching. I would.
got to have that energy <laughs> somehow. Sugar rush. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Thank you, Christy. Well, if you went to bed early last night, you missed out. The Duke Blue Devils are college basketball's champions once again. They beat the Badgers last night in Indy 68-63. to Pretty good game. Very exciting with lead changes throughout. Duke eventually made a big run at the end of the second half. It's the fifth national title for head coach Mike Krzyzewski. Now second all-time only to UCLA legend John Wooden. Big game there. Lots of mm -hmm. celebration going on, obviously, in North Carolina on the Duke campus. Of course, we've got some more NCAA action coming up later this week. UND going to be taking on uh, Boston University in the Frozen Four Thursday night, the late game. The late so. game. So, yeah, get your uh, UND gear back out. <laughs> After the big weekend in Fargo, watching I'm them, I'm sure it didn't really just, go go too no, far. No, it didn't away go too far. Closet. That's very not good as point. far back as I had to put my Minnesota gear you know, after their embarrassing performance. When I performance. was at those the, the games that weekend, they were like everyone was I, like, Lisa, tell Kyle that people people found me after <laughs> after my arrogance Kyle and last his, year. And his gopher, his uh, <sighs> love of the gopher. What goes around comes around. If you want to stay updated on breaking news and weather alerts wherever you go. Remember to sign up for our Valley News Live text alerts. You can head to our website for all the details. Kyle cries sometimes during commercial breaks <laughs> for his gophers. All last I week. I know what comes around. <laughs> Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, 7 out of 10 mothers get stressed doing this. The answer, watching their kids play sports. You can yeah, take part in our question of the morning on our Valley News Live Facebook page. That makes perfect sense, yeah. And the other three are going, come on, ram him again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no. That. Yelling at the refs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, here's a uh, quick Fifth check of our uh, outlook today. Plan for cloudy and cool, a little bit of rain, maybe a tenth of an inch for some, or maybe a little bit of snow cover on the ground by the end of the day. Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the yelling at the rest mom? I'm going to be. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm the crazy mom. I can't help it. My poor kids. I'm so Good crazy. I'm so embarrassing. <laughs> we'll have more local news and weather for you right here in 25 minutes. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning.